I'm Kate Garland, Senior Conservator of Objects at the Nelson Atkins Museum. I am Ying An Lu, Associate Curator of Chinese Art at the Nelson Atkins Museum. It is 100 Crane's Imperial Robes was uncovered in the Qin Dynasty Imperial Tomb during the early 20th century. This tomb belonged to Crane School. Originally, the colors would have been bright, like you see around the cranes in the middle. But on the right side, you see that it's much discolored, a different sort of tan color from burial. A dragon robe for high-ranking officials, such as this one, has nine dragons in the, in the body. The artist did not use existing pattern or stencil to repeat the image of dragon or crane. Gold thread here, it's actually made with a little bundle of silk that was wrapped with very fine gold foil. And then the gold thread is actually couched or sewn down onto the damask. The satin stitch is what you see on most of the broad areas of the embroidery. If you look at the little cranes, you can see that they're carrying little offerings of fruits and flowers. And if you look at the head, you'll see there's a little uh, knot that's made out of three or four knots to create the eye in three dimensions. Each frying crane holds uh, different types of crane in its beak. We see here a crane holds a branch of peaches in its beak. Then we see another one holds a branch of bamboo tree in its beak. Here we see another frying crane holds a kind of, a type of mushroom branch called the Linzi in Chinese. We can translate as magic fungus. It is say if you eat magic fungus, you can live a long life. So because of this image, we can understand this role was particularly chosen for the eternal life of Prince Guo by himself or by his family.